so I will just uh, open the uh, question and answer to the floor uh, first, and then uh, if there's other, uh, you know, questions on the floor. How many dating my here? Copy. Hi. Uh, this question is to uh, Mr. Pert Dalbert uh, on the uh, cloud readiness index. Uh, we all talk about uh, disaster recovery. It was real as we saw in Japan last March, about a year ago. So um, can you share with us, uh, were there any uh, programs or what were the impact on cloud computing on, from that disaster, number one? And number two, uh, will then Hong Kong be taking over Japan in the next research as the number one city in Asia? Thank you. Okay. Um yeah, thanks for the question. Um, you might have seen it. It's at the bottom of the, of the uh, index. It says that this research or this study uh, used data points uh, from before disaster in, in, in Japan, for example. So, of course, um, looking, and I think the Japanese government is obviously looking at the, the whole uh, power grid issue. And, and, and of course, the, the whole disaster brought about a question that was even wider than that in looking at their reliance on nuclear power going forward. So how Japan is going to resolve the power grid um, or their power uh, questions going forward is going to be quite a big issue. But of course, the impact on cloud computing, I think it, it certainly put the whole uh, disaster recovery um, aspect into into uh, a perspective, and I think other countries as well. And we saw in Thailand just very recently with uh, the impact of the flooding there um, that that has had. Um, and, and I think in some of the recent research uh, from late 2011, um, and uh, I think it was Forrester that looked at it. I think one of the most growing areas in in cloud is uh, disaster recovery. Um, and of course, from a Japanese perspective they would probably look uh, at it uh, more urgently and they would look at it from a more international perspective. And I know that there's been some new um, business relationships between uh, some of the uh, 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 service providers in Japan and over in Korea, for example, that came from that. Uh, your, your second question, whether this would uh, then put uh, Japan at the lower and Hong Kong at a higher <laughs> level, um, I, I, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't say whether this is going to be one of the determining factors in there. But of course, it'll, it, it will have an impact. Um, uh, and you don't want to speculate in any disasters around the region. And, 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 and um, so I, I couldn't really say whether that is going to have an impact. But I mean, I think we see positive, and, it, and the importance is not so much in, in the way we see it is to put uh, one or two scores to different countries. It's more to be indicative on um, where the strengths and weaknesses of different uh, uh, countries are in, in terms of readiness of, for, for cloud. Um, so so uh, the more important thing is it brings up a discussion to, to, to the floor about what needs to be done to be more ready for cloud. Yeah. Maybe I, I'll tell you one. I, I can't help to add a remarks uh, to echo uh, uh, Daniel's uh, mention about in the mornings. It's uh, basically Hong Kong has one of the very important edge when you compare to Japan. Is Hong Kong basically have no natural disaster. So it gives Hong Kong a very important uh, edge about uh, having such a major infrastructure uh, to be placed with, uh, with no natural disasters. And that's just one way that. OK. <clears throat> Can I have? OK, second question. Uh, basically, the question is around, uh, we talk about cloud has to be location independent, but there are uh, various governments which have restrictions on the data movement. Uh, to, for example, China for, and even India has some restrictions on uh, what type of data can go out, same as in EU. So how, how do we think that this is going to evolve and affect the cloud growth or uh, regulations around it? So your questions to any, any expert. <laughs> okay. Anyone of you want to kind of comment? This gentleman, questions? I agree. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think the current policy restricting the free flow of private data you know, information across the border is a severe deterrent. Or I should say, if that were removed, there would be a lot of new opportunities open to both sides of the border. 
Uh, but uh, to, to some extent, I think there are different ways to look at location independent. Right now, if you have access to the internet, you already have access to the tools. You have to still have to live with the data jurisdiction issue, but the tools are available to you already, subject to some restrictions. I think some, some software may not be available, accessible in China. But by and large, if you have X, uh, in, in fairly short order, I think a lot of the services would be available no matter where you are. It's pretty much whether you have access to the internet or not. Eddie, do you want to comment on that? Because you, I think you have a lot of uh, business client. Do they have any concerns like? Yeah, I think that's my another part of my life. But uh, I think the comment is true. I agree. It, it is true. And uh, it's a good thing because uh, that means a lot of people will, forced, will be forced to set up their own cloud in that jurisdiction, right? That means more money for the vendors and software people. But then I guess that's also defeat the purpose of cloud, right? So all in all is I guess at the end of the day, when we sort out all those standard issues, you know, we have no, no concern about security and uh, availability, access speed, response time. I think uh, less so, I would say, the, uh, these countries will put on those restrictions around the cloud. Uh, well, I want to um, uh, comment a bit on the user perspective because government is, is coming to be the, the, the user or major user of the cloud. And uh, not because of the concern about individual jurisdictions about uh, the restriction of data, uh, fee flow or information, but as a user perspective, probably uh, I, I share the same concern of, of those major cloud users. We need to know the whereabouts of our data. So. Um, so in, with that sense, uh, we also we are we also concerned about whether you, as a service provider, you will take my data away from the the jurisdiction that I can't control, and that is something that we, we we need some serious thought about that. But of course, I think technology can help a bit in terms of uh, securing the data, uh, as I mentioned, in terms of how to securely we erase the data. But um, but uh, again. It is pretty scary that uh, if I back on the service provider and then he say that, oh, your data is in some, some place else that I don't know. So that is the, the user perspective of the side. Yeah. Actually, just echo on that. I want to, uh, it's, it's a very good comment. I just want to ask a question on the floor uh, related to that. How many of you actually have uh, online banking or, or you, uh, Wang Sang, Ying Hang, Le Fu Wu? Right? You have, right? And uh, when, your last time when you logged into your online banking, right? Have you ever thought about where is my password being stored? No, right? Anyone? So I think, I think on that note, that of course, there are applications that are sensitive to, uh, to what's just mentioned. But then sometimes when we used it, the end user's concern, this is online banking, right? So it, it is important, right? Some people might draw my money from my bank, right? But then I, I don't really know where my password is being stored, to be honest. So that's actually some human factors things. Yeah, you create a lot of... Uh, okay, Pearl, you want to go ahead? Yeah, no, I was just going to say, I mean, it, it, uh, it's got to do with trust, doesn't it? It, it, it? it comes down to trust in your provider. And in, if you trust HSBC, um, then you trust them sort of full-heartedly. Um, cloud is still a little bit early. Um, and... Um, um, and of course, you, you, you don't have any kind of relationship necessarily with your, at least to start with your public uh, cloud providers. So, so uh, I think, you know, besides the effort in aligning and trying to harmonize a standardized way of, uh, of best governance and, and so forth between countries so that you have a similar set of data protection, or that there is data protection and privacy laws, et cetera, uh, and, and harmonization. Uh, governments will also play, play quite an important role in, in helping and creating that trust. Because the second thing after you say, you don't know, do you know where your password is? Do you know where your money is? I, you know, who knows where their money is? You know, it's, it's not that you can go and touch it, right? So. Okay, maybe, maybe I open the floor again.